Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Em and this is episode four of Wheel of Doom Picks, my audiobook. If this is your first time catching an episode in this series, this is a monthly series that I do where I try to prioritize reading down my extensive Libro FM TBR. I have a spinning wheel with all the numbers of all the unread audiobooks I have and then I have a Google spreadsheet that correlates each audiobook with a number and we just spin and see what we get. I did spin earlier today because I needed an audiobook before I started doing some chores around the house and I got This Is My America by Kim Johnson and I've had this book since 2020. That's a long time. Uh, and this is a YA contemporary fiction. This is about Tracy whose father was falsely accused and charged of a double homicide and he is on death row and Tracy's mission to get him exonerated. And I've listened to a chapter already and it opens with Tracy and her mom and her brother and her sister are on this local talk show to talk about her brother who is a track star, but Tracy hijacks the interview and uses it to talk about her father being falsely accused and her goal in trying to get him released from prison. And so I've been definitely dodging this book for a while because it's got heavy, heavy themes, heavy topic. Uh, but Bonnie Turpin does the audiobook and I do love Bonnie Turpin as an audiobook narrator. So I am interested to see where this is going to go. Oh, I forgot to do this in episode three, but we are starting this month with 297 audiobooks, which is not bad. It, we started at, I started at 314 something obscene. I mean, don't get me wrong, 290 whatever is still kind of obscene amount of audiobooks to have, but you know, it, we're, it's progress. It's progress, which is great. So um, yeah, I'm excited to keep going with this one. And like I said, it's been on my TBR for so long. It'll be so nice to finally either listen to it or DNF it. This is a pro DNF series. And I just can't be precious about <laughs> pushing through a book I'm not enjoying. But so far, we're off to a good start. I also have a um, cross stitch project that I'm going to be working on while I listen to audiobooks this month. I usually crochet, but summer, it's just too hot. So I'm trying to get in to cross stitch and I bought a pattern off of Etsy. It's a really cute little ghost reading in the library. I'm going to show you what it looks like and I'll try to remember to link the shop I got it from below if I remember or I'll, at least I'll link the ghost. It's just so stinking cute. All right, so it's that little ghosty. Isn't it just the cutest? It's going to take me forever. Uh, but I'm really excited about it. So anyways, my goal is to hopefully get through three to five audiobooks. Minimum is three. Dream world, I would like to get through five. I'll go come back when I have something to tell you. Y'all, it's so hot today. Oh my gosh. It, I don't know why I'm surprised that it's summer <laughs> and it's acting like summer. Anyways, hopefully my AC is not too loud, but I wanted to give you a quick update for This Is My America. So I gave you kind of our setup and then um, after that, shortly after that, Tracy's older brother is falsely accused of murdering a fellow student. And so Tracy is now like on this mission to prove her brother's innocence as well as trying to get her father's case acquitted. And I... I like the writing. I like the characters. I This is very much a book that is written for white people and explaining police brutality to white people and that there is a difference between how police treat white people and how they treat black and brown people. Like I said, I, I like the writing. I like the characters, but I don't know that this book is going to have a lot of appeal or not appeal. I don't know. I know it's hard. It's very much like an issues book kind of the way like the hate you give is kind of an issues book and is really explaining the realities of the world to white people which is necessary 
unfortunately. I definitely think I'm going to finish. It's a fast listen. I love Bonnie Turpin, so she's easy to listen to. I'm curious to see, like, obviously the police are covering up what really happened because, like, they're not... Like, Tracy is finding evidence that the police claim they already have, but they can't have it because Tracy has it, so obviously they're lying. And so I'm interested to see how this is going to shake out. It's YA, so I assume, like, justice will be served. This book did come out in 2020, like, I think mid-2020, which is obviously the perfect time for this book to come out into the world. I think that was the time when it was probably most needed to be out in the world. So it's interesting because it is like I, I worked in the bookstore during the summer of 2020 when everybody was buying all the nonfiction books that talked about race in America and then promptly did not read all the books that they were buying about race in America. But yeah, it's interesting to read this and remember the context in which it came out to the world. And I remember like at my bookstore, we had a holiday catalog every year that I think it was like put put together by publishers and Pacific Northwest booksellers of America. I think that's what they I think that's what it was, what the organization is called. Anyways, and this book was in that catalog. So I remember having it in the bookstore and I just can't remember if it was one that sold well or if it sat on the shelf for a long time. But I remember thinking at the time that it was an interesting choice for a holiday catalog book. But I like it. I think it's a worthwhile book for teens to read and maybe like older middle grade to read. But yeah, those are my thoughts so far. Um, it is my birthday today and I did go to work for a little bit and I got my free birthday drink, um, which I won't put there because that will be annoying. And then I only taught two of my classes today. I purposely didn't schedule my dance class knowing that I would not want to teach it on my birthday. And then the library book sale happened to fall today as well. And I never get to go to the library book sale because it's always over by the time I get done teaching dance. So I just went and I got, just got three things. So I spent $3 uh, and I got three books that I've ha been eyeballing for a while. Um, I got The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. I read Cast when it came out and really liked it. And I've been wanting to read this, her debut as well, it's nonfiction. And then I got Shades of Milk and Honey by Mary Robinette Cole, which is like Pride and Prejudice, but with magic, I think. And then I also got Alice by Christina Henry. And yes, I have another Christina Henry at home that I haven't read. I have The Girl in Red. It was on my Summerwind TBR. No, I did not read it. I didn't get to it, um, but I like Alice in Wonderland. So I got it because, you know, it'll be, spooky season before I know it. So anyways, that's your little update for today. And I'll come back when I finish. All right, friends, I finished This Is My America and I'm going to give it four stars. I did really like this. I like the writing. It did get to be a little bit of a thriller, like the tension really ramped up. And I thought the resolution, like the reveal for everything was a little predictable, but that's okay because it's YA. So like, predictable to an adult isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't, for YA, I don't think. I'm not marking that against the book. And I, yeah, like I said, I do think this is very much written for a white audience just based off how unsubtle the messaging is. And it very much like the things that Kim Johnson is talking about are things that black kids are going to be really familiar with and white kids maybe not so much so there's that for whatever it's worth um but now we get to spin for another book which is always exciting Okay, that means it's gonna be like when I got really recently. Yeah, because that, oh, that's exactly the last one. I, no, 295, not 297. 295. Oh, good. A sorceress comes to call. So, this I actually have a copy of because 
I have the ALC and this is on my TBR for July. <gasps> that, what, what a win. That's great. I've actually read the first chapter of this already because I tried a chapter of a bunch of arcs that I had. So this is a dark retelling of The Goose Girl, which is one of my favorite like OG fairy tales. I love The Goose Girl. Um, and so this is about Cordelia. And in the first, the first chapter is really spooky because you learn that Cordelia's mother is able to control her using magic. And it, like, so whenever Cordelia misbehaves, her mother uses magic to make it so that Cordelia can't move, she can't speak, she can't really do anything without her mother's direction or permission. And it was, it was dark, but I've discovered that I tend to love T. King Fisher's books more when they lean into horror and like them less when they lean into cozy. So because this one was so dark in the first chapter, I'm really hoping that this ends up being a win for me. So yay. All right, the kids are watching TV shows. So hopefully it's not too loud because the living room is right on the other side of the wall from where I have the camera, but that doesn't matter. What matters is I'm 61% of the way through A Sorceress Comes to Call, which is T. King Fisher's new book. It comes out in August, I think. Yeah, August. Look, I've really struggled, not struggled, that's dramatic. I have not loved T. King Fisher's most recent releases. I, I thought What Feast at Night was fine, and mm, this book, I can't remember what it's called. I never remember what it's called. I always want to call it Frog Kisser, but that's by Garth Nix. This is a different book. Also a different fairy tale. Anyways, not important. This one I liked, but I hated the ending. I'm such an endings re reader that if I don't like the ending, that is the feeling that I carry with me when I think about the book forever and ever, always. So the fact that I am loving this, ooh, loving this, loving this, I'm loving this, is great because I love T. King Fisher and I want to always love her books. So this is a dark retelling of The Goose Girl. Goose Girl is one of my favorite, favorite fairy tales. It's about a, well, the goose girl is about a princess who is being sent to marry a prince. And on the way there, her handmaiden forces her to switch places with her. And so then the handmaiden gets to go and be the princess and be engaged to the prince. And then the princess is forced to be uh, a maid servant. And yeah, fairy tale stuff happens, blah, 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 blah. Everyone is reassigned to their appropriate places. Uh, the princess does marry the prince. They live happily ever after the end. I skipped over a lot of stuff. It's my favorite fairy tale. I love it so much, but it's dark. And then this is supposed to be a dark retelling. I was like, really? well, how, how much darker are we gonna get? Cause that fairy tale is already very dark. This is starts with Cordelia who is 14 years old and Cordelia's relationship with her mother, you find out really quickly is not the way it should be. Uh, Cordelia's mother is a sorceress and when Cordelia misbehaves, which is basically doing something that her mother doesn't like, her mother forces her to be obedient, which means Cordelia can't do anything. Her mother is in total control of her body, of her mouth, of her words. The only thing that Cord Cordelia can really still control is her eyes. And it's awful and horrible and abusive and like gives a real sense of dread to the beginning of the book. And then we're introduced to a second protagonist, Hester. And Hester is 50 and Hester is a spinster by choice and lives with her brother, the squire, who is not the brightest candle in the, anyway, he's not very smart. And Cordelia's mother, Evangeline has set her sights on marrying the squire so that they can have money and have a position of power in this kingdom town. It's it's a very, I don't have a very good sense of place, I will say, like whether we're in a kingdom or a village or a city, it's very nebulous. It's very fairy tale where it's an undefined place. Um, the rules are very, like the societal rules are very much like historical England, but you know, it's, it's, it's very much a fairy tale and like the place, the place doesn't matter as much as the characters do. Hester doesn't want Evangeline to marry her brother and 
It's so funny. Like, it's very classic T. Kingfisher humor. Like, Hester refers to Evangeline as Doom, capital D, like, all the time when you're in her POV. And we're alternating in between Hester and Cordelia's. And I love Hester so much. She's so funny. She's got bad knees. She's, she's only 50, but she feels... Sometimes she reads older, which <laughs> as someone who just turned 40... I don't love that it's only 10 years later and older than me and Hester is as run down as she is. <laughs> like, I don't love that. But I do love Hester. I love her sense of humor. Um, and I love the side characters. Like, Hester recruits her friends to try to help stop Evangeline from marrying her brother. And her friends are also fantastic. The relationship that Hester and Cordelia start to form with each other is A+. Plus. This is kind of the perfect fairy tale retelling where you can read it with no knowledge of the goose girl and it's just it's a good dark fantasy darker fantasy but if you do know the goose girl or are familiar with it there's so so many references to it that you can catch and little nods to that original fairy tale so I'm having a great time. I really like the audiobook. It's dual narrators, and I think they're both doing a great job. I like that they didn't cast somebody super young sounding as Cordelia. Like, even though she's only 14, I like that it's not somebody with, like, a really high-pitched, young-sounding voice. I was a little worried it was going to be, like, a Jane Entwistle situation, which, don't get me wrong, I think Jane, Jane Entwistle is a great narrator. Like, she does the Flavia de Lucy books. She's wonderful. But I, I don't know that that high pitched t would fit the tone of the book. So I like that it's somebody with a little bit of a deeper register. And I think the person narrating Hester's part is just perfection. So good. So I'm having a great time. It took me a while to get going, not because of the book, just because I didn't haven't had a lot of audio time this summer. Shocking. I don't have time to listen to audiobooks. My kids are home. I don't, yeah, I know. Not, not a surprise, but I had a lot of chores that I needed to do today. And so I've just been doing my chores with my headphones on, pausing when somebody needs something, pressing play when they don't. And it's just, it's just been a good time. I've also kind of thought that maybe I need to find more booktubers who have children, not necessarily to see, I don't want to see other people's kids in their content. And I try really hard to keep my kids out of my content as much as possible, but I, I do need to see more parents reading to get a more realistic view of putting reading into your life because not that I don't love all the childless booktubers that I follow, but the free time flex <laughs> just gets to me sometimes. It just gets to me sometimes. And then I feel like I need to apologize for not getting a lot of reading done because I'm taking care of my kids. But it's like, it's, not, it's, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. Job of parenting comes first. So I just need to find some people who are also juggling the parenting and the working and the reading so I don't feel like, oh, I don't ever have any time to read, which is not true. I have so much time to read. Anyways, I started rambling. and uh, So um, loving it. Hopefully I will, I'm going to finish it tomorrow. So I don't have very, I don't, mm, I don't know that there are enough pages left to fix like the situation that they are in. We'll see. I don't think this is supposed to be series. I think this is a standalone. So we'll just, we'll just see. But I'm optimistic about my rating and about the ending. Okay, bye. Hello friends, it is the next day. Well, it's the next evening. <laughs> and I did finish A Sorcerer's Comes to Call by T. King Fisher. And I'm going to give it a very specific 4.25 stars because I did really enjoy this one far more than I've enjoyed the previous two Tiki Fishers. I said that already. Yeah, this one, it was interesting. I would almost say this is cozy fantasy, if not for the very dark themes. Like, obviously, there, well, maybe not obviously, but you know, there's murder, there's abuse, there's PTSD, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really heavy conflict. But the way Tiki Fisher writes, there are so many light moments, moments of humor, moments of character connection that it it does almost feel like a cozy fantasy, even though it would be like a dark cozy fantasy, which is 
like a contradiction in terms. So I don't know. I, I did really enjoy this one. I didn't love the ending as much as the beginning, which is why it's, you know, maybe a 4.25 instead of a four and a half or a five star. Um, I felt like the ending would almost resolved in, well, it did kind of resolve in a predictable way. I found that a little bit disappointing and it was one of those endings where sometimes when I watch a movie or I read a book and you have this big bad villain and there's there's times where I feel like the battle to defeat the villain matches the level of difficulty that I have in my head and there are other times where that rising action or that climactic action happens and I feel like it was too easy and I felt a little bit like we had all this build up and all this build up and all the sorceress is so wicked and horrible and she was but then her defeat felt a little too easy and maybe it wasn't but I don't know I felt that let down a little bit and and maybe it could have been because maybe it was too easy or it could have been because I felt, I felt like it was predictable. And there's nothing wrong with a predictable ending, but I felt, I felt a little let down by the ending. I'm not quite sure what I would have wanted, but I did find myself wanting a little bit more. I mean, I still really loved the characters. I loved Hester so much. Um, Hester is also disabled and I thought the disability rep was really well done. And there were just so many things to really like about this book that they definitely outweigh the few extremely, extremely nitpicky things I have about the book as well. Do with that as you will. But I think if you already love T. King Fisher, you'll have a good time with this. I think if you've never read her before, oh, I don't know that this is where I would start. There's other books of hers that I love more that I think are better introductions to her work, but this wouldn't be a bad place to start. It may not be the one I would tell you to read, but it's a perfectly serviceable one <laughs> to start with. Anyways, um, so I did already spin for my next book, and I tell you when I tell you, when I saw the number and then went over my Google spreadsheet and I saw the book that was assigned to that number, I went, oh, it is time in my best Mufasa impression, which is you know, also, no, Mufasa, Rafiki. Which one says that in The Lion King? Anyways, I did my, obviously not my best impression because those would be two very different impressions. But anyways, that was my thought because this book I have wanted to read since it came out. I have decided in my head for zero reason, zero reason, zero, zero evidence, zero... <laughs> I have nothing to base this assumption on, but I have decided a long time ago that this author could be a new favorite if I just read her books. <laughs> there, there's the difficulty. But it is The Declaration of the Rights of Magicians by H.G. Perry. Now, I have been putting off this book because this audiobook is 20 hours long. Do I have time to read a 20-hour audiobook? No, I don't. Uh, I am already desperately trying to read The Three-Body Problem. That was supposed to be my intimidating book for the end of the, the month. And now I have this. <laughs> but the wheel chose it. It is time. And God, I hope I love this book. I hope I have not just been gaslighting myself for the last five years. When did this book come out? How long? Not five years. That's too long. 2021. So three years. But still that's a long time. So let's just hope that I have not been gaslighting myself. It wouldn't be gaslighting. Let's hope I haven't been tricking myself about how I'm going to feel about H.G. Perry's books. Because in my head, she's going to be my new favorite author of all time. In my head, I'm going to feel the same way about her that I feel about M.A. Carrick. And that's, 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 a, that's a high, that's a high goal. That's a high attainability. I don't know. That's, mm-hmm high expectations. So wish me luck. And God, I hope I like it. Okay. Hello friends. Well, this is embarrassing, but <laughs> I am 16% into this book that I can't remember 
the full title of Declaration of the Rights of Magicians, maybe, and I am gonna DNF it. <laughs> it's reminded me a lot of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, even though I don't think their plots are even remotely the same and the characters aren't the same, and it's been a forever since I read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, but um, it's giving me similar vibes. And I'm bored. <laughs> and I, I don't really care about what's going on with these men. I don't. I don't. <laughs> That's basically, basically how I feel. Uh, and <laughs> I never want to listen to it. I Every time I have audiobook time, I am picking up a different audiobook or I find myself on Libby looking for a different book to listen to. It's just not something that I'm gravitating towards and it's really slowing my reading down. So I may have to reevaluate my thoughts on H.G. Perry and whether or not <laughs> she would be the favorite author that I inexplicably decided she would be. Um, sadly, I'm going to do it after this and, and I'm going to end this vlog. So definitely not my most successful round of Wheel of Doom. All right, editing Emily is popping in just to be, just to say, I'm sorry I'm being such a Debbie Downer at the end of this video. I had totally forgotten that I'd read This Is My America at the beginning of the month. So another reason for why I'm going to try to mix up how I tackle this project in August and that way I will not forget that I read good books at the beginning of the month by the time I get to the end of the month. Um, also further evidence of that I am an endings person and because I was ending on a DNF I just all the good feelings from the previous two books left left my soul anyway so sorry and uh next month it will be better. <laughs> I'm going to reevaluate how I go about filming this series. I've been trying to do audiobooks for this series intermittently throughout the month and film in the middle of doing other things. And I'm finding that's a very scattered approach and it's not one that is really working well for me. And so I'm going to try that for this next episode, episode five. Ooh, for up. I think uh, for episode five, I'm going to try doing it in one week and just listening to as many audiobooks in that week as I can. And we're going to try it that way. And I'm going to see if that's maybe a little bit more successful than the way I have been doing it because I feel like the way I have been doing it, I just lose enth enthusiasm as we go throughout the month. And I would like to not because I like being enthusiastic about stuff. And then I'm hopeful, hopefully, that will give these vlogs a little bit more momentum because I. I'm not loving the finished product right now. I did the first month, but like the, the rest of the episodes, I haven't been loving. So I'm going to try something new. So maybe episode five will be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more enthusiastic, a little bit more exciting. And hopefully that will be a bigger win in terms of the audiobooks that I listen to. This one was kind of disappointing. Anyway, so if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me. <laughs> Sorry we ended on a dud. I hate doing that, but it just is what it is. And it's it's so close to when this video needs to go out now that I don't feel like I have the time to start another audiobook. It admits the other projects that I have going on. So if you would like to leave an emoji to let me know you were here. Well, that's not how I end these videos. Um, thank you so much for spending your precious time with me. I really appreciate it. If you would like to leave an emoji to let me know you were here. What did we even, what did I even listen to this month? That's another problem. It's just too, too long and I forget. Um, let's do a pair of headphones. And like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye! <laughs>